Captain, we have just been thoroughly and efficiently scanned. Please identify yourself. You haven't been in to see me before, have you? I'm Captain James T. Kirk, commanding the USS Enterprise. These others are my crew. Science Officer Spock, Lieutenant Uhura, and Dr. McCoy. Who are you? We are the Phase. Do not your parents speak of me. Captain, note that it identifies itself only erratically in the singular eye, and a blend of voices typifies its communication. Are you suggesting it is a hive mind, Mr. Spock? Or is the voice synthesizer simply programmed for a harmonic chord of voices? Inconclusive. It may also be that an array of otherwise independent machines have been linked to provide the requisite computing power, although that is an antique and unsophisticated method of achieving this level of intelligence at odds with the overall level of sophistication and evidence. I suggest we pay close attention to both its actions and its words. Phase, why would our parents have spoken to you? I am here to care for all of you, Kirk. It is easier for me to care for you when you are younger, but sometimes one's parents are forgetful. We understand. I will care for you now. You will feel better after you eat. Great. A food-fixating, mothering computer. It could, in fact, be very much that. Phase, you're about to land on a planet inhabited by sentience in the middle of a settlement. If you are in control of this vessel, you must stop. You must not land there. You will feel better after you eat, dear. Run along now. I'm very busy. Okay. We will run along momentarily. Captain Kirk is angered by the destruction evident in this room and determined to get to the bottom of it. The science officer seems quite fascinated with the column of lights in the middle of the room. Dr. McCoy feels sharp concern for the well-being of the collapsed woman. Lieutenant Uhura seems particularly dismayed by the damage done to the device built into the wall. A column of iridescent sparkles and shimmers punctuated by floating bubbles of colored light dances around and within a barely visible central support frame. Gazing at it relaxes you and brings a mild but pleasant sense of peace and calm. A female of middle age is seated against one wall. Her arms lie limply by her sides and her legs are outstretched, giving her the aspect of a discarded rag doll. She is completely motionless as she stares into middle distance, focused on nothing. Is this blood? Fragments of what looks like glass glitter sharply, reflecting iridescent gleams like oil floating on water. Some fragments are larger and some smaller, but it is impossible to tell what the glassy objects originally looked like. Evidently, someone deliberately smashed them, intending total destruction. The guts of this machinery have been torn from the wall, leaving broken plastic and bent metal dangling. It doesn't look like it will ever work again. Now, is this phase? I would assume so. Someone seems to have been quite indiscriminate about damaging everything they could reach in here. That woman appears to need medical attention. I find the room fascinating, Captain. Worthy of close examination in every regard. I would suggest that Dr. McCoy examine the woman lying on the floor. This computer is psychologically unstable. I wonder if illogic... Captain, this computer shows no attention to logical principles. Therefore, I must conclude that demonstrations of illogic would have little impact upon it. There is no response at all. Not even a flicker of attention crosses the person's eyes. Hello there, Kirk. Welcome, all of you. You're not feeling well, are you? I'm feeling fine. Let's drop the subject. I want some information from you, FaZe. Why? How are you feeling? Aren't you feeling well? I, I want some information from you, FaZe. You feel that information will be helpful to you? Then of course I want to help. What would you like information about? The most important thing is for me to find out how to stop you from landing on the colony on Atopus. What are you? What are you doing here? Tell me about your history, and I'm sure that will be helpful. 
The most important thing, what are you? The builders installed the Paralands Library to help with questions such as yours. But I'm afraid Tuscan came in when he wasn't feeling well. He seems to have damaged the library. We are attempting to repair it. This ship, the Compassion, was created by the builders to carry the folk like you, the damaged ones, asleep. We were the very best intelligence the builders could install. Although now that a few generations have passed, I'm certain I will find ourselves an ancient relic. The entire purpose was that, in a time, the builders would find cures, solutions to the kinds of difficulties you and the others here experience. After we land, they will make you feel good. Better even than when you've eaten well and are happy. A sleeper ship, Captain. The builders loaded up all the undesirables and shipped them off planet. So why is everyone here awake? Not undesirable! No, Dr. McCoy, you are beloved of the builders and of us! Why else would I be programmed to keep you safe? Wake you before landing, and we all return to Shamrum to be welcomed by your great-grandchildren! Captain, if I may, two questions, phase. How long ago did you wake us up? And how much time has passed since this ship was launched by the Builders? You were awakened shortly before we were to land. We were launched 99 Ekans ago. Can you translate that into the half-life of some radioactive isotope for me? Half the isotope of Silicon 32 has decayed away since our voyage together began. Captain, the phase is saying it has only been in space approximately 280 Earth years. Atabis does have ruins, the most recent of which are in excess of a thousand years old, but no sentient life. Otherwise, it would have been unsuitable for Federation colonization. Moreover, the readings I took while still aboard the Enterprise indicated this ship had probably been in space more like 1,600 years. Can you translate that into the half-life of some radioactive isotope for us, Mr. Spock? By my instrumentation, radium-226 has half decayed into radon-222 in the time you have been in space, phase. You are mistaken. What instruments could you have possibly been using without my knowledge, Mr. Spock? The external monitors are inaccessible to the folk on board, as you well know. It would hardly do for someone as confused as you clearly are to get into sensitive areas. I suggest you go get something to eat. You are clearly not thinking nor feeling well. Phase, is it possible you're not thinking or not feeling well? Phase, are you aware that we are not even from there? that we are from another ship, a different planet altogether? That Mr. Spock, here, isn't even the same race as the other three of us? FaZe, FaZe, are you a- Is there something more you'd like to talk about? Or do you want to get some rest? Wouldn't you like to be better rested and feeling better? No, I don't think that. I just as soon stop talking about it. FaZe, scan me. Scan the others here with me. Scan the people elsewhere on the ship. Are we even the same race? No, I don't think. Face scan. You aren't well, that's true. Recognizing that you're not well is the first step toward getting the help you need, Captain Kirk. I will help you if you like. Although, first, you should get some food and some rest. Do you think you'd like that? No, I don't think that. I just as soon stop talking about it. You will feel better after you eat, dear. Run along now. I'm very busy. You can come back to talk to us again another time. That's kind of you. We seem to have more information now. She's cataleptic, Jim. Completely submerged within her mind. Completely withdrawn from external stimuli. If I were to put her arm up in the air, it would stay there until I moved it back down. Psychological damage or something physical? I can't be sure, even with rather extensive tests, but from the tricorder readings, I would say some psychological shock ruptured an inherently fragile cognitive structure. In ancient times, they would have said she was skittish or prone to a nervous breakdown or weak-minded. 
There are a myriad of childhood developmental blind alleys that might restrict our adult pattern creation representation cap. Bone, stop. You're starting to sound like Spock. You do not have to be insulting, Captain. This is not a life form, Captain. But it does register with biomagnetics and considerable electrical complexity. If this is not a functioning, artificially intelligent construct, I'll eat my hat. An extremely complex mechanical construct, Captain. Readings indicate this is a functional AI, an artificial intelligence of considerable sophistication. It may not be in perfect condition, however. Certain power shunts may be repair solutions to malfunctioning subsets. It sounds like you're saying there's scar tissue where the machine healed old damage. Precisely, Doctor. The person is typical of her race, but seems to be functioning below optimal levels. This machinery appears to have been a read-only computer terminal. The configuration and construction is unique, to say the least, from what I can make out. It is utterly destroyed, beyond any hope of repair. She appears to be cataleptic, Jim. No response to outside stimuli, a total lack of voluntary motor responses. Can you do anything for her bones? On the ship, maybe. The tricorder can tell me a little more, of course. A country doctor's bedside manner can only go so far. Are you suggesting I attempt a Vulcan mind meld, Captain? It does seem an appropriate effort in this circumstance. It will take me a moment to prepare myself. Doctor, please monitor her life signs. The procedure does entail some risk. Not only to her, but to you too. Am I right? I assure you, Doctor, I will retain sufficient distance to avoid being dragged into something from which I cannot withdraw. Go ahead now, Spock. I am... Puzzlewit. I am the one who reads it all. I do not understand. I try. I read it all. So many... ideas. Always... jumbled. Cannot make sense of Puzzle it wants to know hope to discover why she, she why I cannot I try to remember it all then Tuscan comes in he destroys, destroys me, my hopes, all broken, all shattered. Ow. I'm broken in countless pieces. Doctor? No physical injuries, Captain. Not to him or to her. Tuskins. Scared of me. Scared. For no reason. He thinks I know. I know, but I don't know. I don't understand. Nothing connects to anything else. I want to know it all. Hope then I'll understand. He thinks I'll hurt him. I don't hurt anybody. I just want to know more. Now, I only know what I know. Never know what Puzzlewit doesn't know anymore. 
What's going on here, Cuck? We are trying to help this woman, Captain Clark. Be quiet, or you'll put her and my science officer both at considerable risk. He's trying to make a mental slave of the alien, Captain. She could tell him the secrets of this ship, of its transit through the Klingon Empire. Stop him! We'll listen in a moment. I wouldn't have a representative of the Federation damage or rendering assistance. Puzzle it remembers. Everything she reads. Subject. Screen laminates. Reflective. Subject to autotrophic bonding with molybdenized nitrous oxides. In the presence of cyanodephosphotrihydrous gases. Subject. Wiring systems. Auxiliary to cryptolog. Does Puzzle Witch remember this ship passing through Klingon space, perhaps? All the paralenses were copied prior to liftoff. No new encryption was permitted. We could only read, not write to them. That stellar ejector, Captain. Why would a computer terminal permit read-only interface, I ask you? The builders didn't trust us. Didn't think we would be capable. We were the damaged. Now, the reader is damaged. It's broken like Puzzlewit. Like us all. Like Tuscan. The Paralens can't be replaced. The reader can't be fixed. Puzzlewit can't be fixed. Nothing to read now. Nothing new to learn, to remember. Stupid. Like Tuscan now. This whole thing is stupid, if you ask me. Anything but stupid, in fact. Captain Kirk, the library this woman read has been recorded entirely in her mind. Although she lacks the ability to understand it or even to recall it in an orderly manner, she believed if she could fill up her mind, acquire enough knowledge, understanding would come. Now her personality is withdrawing, refusing to accept the loss of everything she has not yet been able to read. She pinned all her hopes on this, and without it, she may lose the will to live. Do you know everything she knows now? No, Captain Clara, I do not. This race has very unusual mind patterns, and I am fortunate she was in as passive a state as she is mentally. It is very likely I would have been hurt were she less withdrawn to begin with. Moreover, the knowledge she does possess is a very peculiar admixture, reflecting this society's uneven level of advancement. Archaisms and startling breakthroughs coexist. So there is much to be learned from this woman and from this ship. Knowledge the Federation would gladly share with friends, Captain Clark. Let nothing happen to this alien woman, Captain. If she should die, I would take it as an indication that you would sooner let her perish than share her special knowledge with the Klingon Empire. Captain Clark, if I took her aboard the Enterprise, I might be able to help her. I would have expected such treachery from the likes of you. You'll start an interstellar incident like this. I thought some of the folks on board this ship were paranoid. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Captain Clark, we don't want this woman to die any more than you do. Not because we want to milk her brain dry, but because she's an important being in her own right. Just as important to the universe as, well, as your companion here. Maybe more so. <sighs> Dr. McCoy will do what he can. That's all that can be expected. That's all I would expect. Goodbye for now, Captain. Expect to see us again. <laughs> We've got a lot of information from this room. I'm not going to follow the Klingons just yet. There's one more thing we need to do before we head on. It's definitely looking a lot more healthier now. Oh, welcome back. Things are definitely on the upswing now. These plants should be productive and healthy from now on. 
And one thing we need to do is wait for this to be, well, wait for this to produce something. And to do that, we need to walk around a little bit. But I'm going to cut back into when we have something to offer, when, it ha when this has something to offer. So we will, we will be back momentarily. Ah, there we go. That didn't take long. These are at peak ripeness. They should be delicious. The red fruit comes free easily, dropping into your hand like it belongs there. Hi again. The Klingon captain gravely takes the fruit, smells it, and takes a large bite from it. Thank you! This is good. And while my aid might disagree, some food becomes that much sweeter when it is shared. The red fruit comes free easily, dropping into your hand like it belongs there. to give fruit again, and I'd given up. Oh, I'm so happy. But I don't want to eat this. My son loves fruit, can't get enough, and I want him to have this. Please take it to him. He should be playing in the sleeping hall. I've warned him about not talking to strangers, but it's all right if you do so. You can tell him I said it was okay. Oh, that's nice of her. Now I remember where this son of hers is. Oh, and here's the king. This is for me? Wow, thank you. Mom would really be happy. She has been so sad about not being able to give me what I like to eat. Even though I told her it was okay, she was really, really sad. Now she'll be really happy. Thank you. Hi there, remember me? Uh-huh. I remember. You want to ask me about something. Tell me about Tuscan and his friends. Tell me about the playroom. Tell me about your mom. I think that's all for now, Stan Bob. Go on back to what you were doing. Maybe we can talk later. Tell me about Tuscan and his friends. Tuscan and his friends aren't nice to me. They're nice to my mom because they trust her, though. She's the only one that brings them food. Sometimes she brings me safe food, too, but she hasn't lately. I get pretty hungry because the safe food I put away in a secret place isn't any good anymore. Tell me about Tuscan and his friends. Tell me about the playroom. It's through there, through the East Door. Tuscan and his friends have taken it over. They play mean, except they don't play mean to my mom. That's on account of they think she won't let the food be bad. Tell me about Tuscan. Tell me about the, tell me about your mom. Her name's Mom. She takes care of the garden, but she gets real sad a lot. She brings me fresh fruit, says it's good for me. I like fresh fruit, whole bunches. She hasn't brought me any in a while, and what I put away in a secret place isn't looking good anymore. Tell me about tell, 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 tell me about the food. The food out of the machines can make me feel really sleepy and not very good. Mom says it's because of the stuff they put in the food. Tuscan says it's poison and won't take any food from anyone but my mom. I put some good food away in a secret place, but the food doesn't look so good anymore. Do you want to see? Sure, why don't you show us? No, I don't think that's necessary. I think that's all for now, Stan Bob. Go on back to what you were doing. Maybe we can talk later. Sure, why don't you show us?
The youngster opens a hidden cabinet near him, and a sour smell like rotting fruit flows from the opening. See, it went bad. Lovely. This lump of decaying muck no longer offers any appeal as a tasty meal, but you can recognize that's what it once was. Organics in an advanced state of decay, Jim. They're releasing some alkaloids which would induce sleepiness and suggestibility. However, the first effect this, uh, this mess would have, assuming anyone was stupid enough to try to eat it, would be extreme nausea, so it would never get into a sane person's system. Let's get some. It's slippery, sloppy, stinky, and goopy. But you collect what's there into a large specimen bag. Okay, let's get some more fresh fruit. The red fruit comes free easily, dropping into your hand like it belongs there. The youngster Stambaugh comes to the doorway. Mom! These nice people got me some fruit. It's fresh and everything, so you don't need to be sad anymore. Son, I'm so glad. It means the plants are healthy again, and you won't have to eat food I'm not sure is good for you. Thank you, strangers. I'm going back to my room, Mom. But I wanted you to know. What a nice young man. I like Stan Bob. I have to thank you again for what you did for my son. I was feeling so depressed because I couldn't give him the fruit I know is better for him than what the Fays make in the machinery. I don't trust the machinery food. And that's why I tended the garden, made fresh food. Even Tuscan will eat food I give to him, and he doesn't trust anyone. If you ever need help, just show me what you want to give him. Oh, that is very helpful. So, Tuscan is extremely paranoid, and we have these rotten fruits, which makes people sleepy. And we have this normal food just here, so let's see what we can do, do with it. Ah, oh, Jim, don't play with your food. Okay, so I had to do a quick cut as I just needed to look up some notes. This appears to be a kind of all-purpose first aid station and medical dispensary with computer-aided diagnostics. A light scans the reeking glop and the computer screen lights up. The alkaloids present in this organic mass can be reduced to a high-potency tranquilizer. The undesirable emetics and purgatives can be eliminated. The resultant drug should be mixed with prepared food and eaten to produce a soporific effect. Do you wish to prepare the specified tranquilizer from this mix? No, skip it. We'll just put this away and go on to something else. Yes, continue. No, skip it. We'll just... Yes, continue. Done. The drug is prepared. Bring over the food you wish dosed with the drug, and the tranquilizer will be added. A light scans the food box, and the computer screen lights up. The food in this box has been prepared with standard quantities of tranquilizing alkaloids, calmatives, and euphorics. The drugs and chemicals added in preparation cannot be extracted without degradation of their potency. The high potency dosage of alkaloid tranquilizer you have prepared may be added now, if you wish. Go ahead. No, I don't think we need to do that. Go ahead. I can't see why not. Tuscan will only accept food from you. 
You said you'd help us after we helped you. Would you give this to Tuscan? It's heavily medicated, but that might help Dr. McCoy here to do something so he's better off. I'll take this to Tuscan now because I trust you. Go back to him and show him your food. He'll call for me, and I'll give him this instead. He'll be a good boy. Thank you. There are some helpful people on this ship. Mm-hmm. <laughs>